Hi, I'm Pastor Bill Wendell. Welcome to our video. Nope. Don't I usually say? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Let's start over. Hi, everyone. I'm Pastor Bill Wendell. Welcome to our video. We're going to start out with a few announcements. First announcement that we have is our church office will be closed for Labor Day. And then starting after that, we will have Teresa will be in the office on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 to 2. Pastor Tom and I will be in and out of the office um, in different times during that time. If you would like to get a hold of us or to meet with us, please just let us know and we'll do everything we can to make ourselves available. Also, we're looking for individuals who want to serve as scripture readers and want to provide a special music at the 1045 worship service. We're also looking for folks for the 9 o'clock uh, worship service for uh, special music. So if you have a musical talent that you'd like to share with us, please let us know. And you can go for 9 o'clock and 1045 or just one or the other. Also, um, as many people know, we have been collecting sanitizing wipes for teachers. If you are a teacher or you know a teacher who'd be interested, we still have uh, many sanitizing wipes available. They're in the entryway as you walk in uh, there to your left hand side. Please come in. We know that the teachers are going to be needing these throughout the year. Uh, we collected them so that people could pick them up. Another announcement is we want to say a big thank you to everyone who has been so generous in the Helping Hands Ministry. This is a ministry helping the working and poor, people who are underemployed, especially during this pandemic, people who uh, have had their hours cut significantly. Uh, they're still working, but unfortunately, it's just not enough to make ends meet. This is a, an effort to help with that. If you'd like to continue to give to that, we have moved the donation bucket inside in the entryway because of rain and inclement weather. As you enter in the entr entryway, it's underneath the windows to the main office. Also, we want to let everyone know to check online for Sunday School K-5. through If you could click on the link in the description below, it will take you right to that page. It actually starts this week. We're really excited about it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Also, we're going to be starting a devotion series on our favorite hymns and the stories behind the hymns. Pastor Tom and I will get this series started off. If you have a hymn that you love and just means a lot to you, let us know. And also let us know why it's meaningful to you and, and maybe we'll even share it as a part of our devotions. Finally, we want everyone to know about our driveway visits. Pastor Tom and I are making ourselves available for visits to people's homes. If you would like a visit or if you know someone who is feeling particularly isolated, we know that this pandemic, one of the worst parts of it has been the isolation. If you know anyone who would be interested in one of these driveway visits, please let us know and we will be able to work out a time. At this time, I'd like to encourage us all to quiet our hearts and our minds as we prepare for worship. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Exodus chapter 3, we're going to start in verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange thing, why this bush doesn't burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for this place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. 
The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of the slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh, to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites, and, and I say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name, then what shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Please pray with me. Lord, thank you for giving us this time to open our lives to you. Help us to surrender to you, to experience your presence and your leading, your encouragement and guidance, even your challenge in our daily lives. Lord, I'm a broken and I'm a sinful man, so my hope, my prayer is that you get me out of the way so that your words of hope, peace, and challenge would come through me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be found loving and acceptable to you. Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am a lifelong procrastinator, and I hate it. Whenever I am putting things off, I, I just can't stand it, but I feel like I can't help it. And this whole COVID pandemic has made it even worse. At one point, I decided to do something about it. I was going to read a book about procrastination, maybe take a class, maybe even see if there's a YouTube video on it. I said, I'm going to definitely do something about my procrastination, and I will start tomorrow. If you're anything like me, whenever you're putting something off, you feel like you're not going anywhere. You feel like you're just kind of wandering through life. This is where we find Moses in our reading out of Exodus. He is tending his father-in-law's flocks in Midian, and he's just kind of wandering through life. He's not living out a burning passion or a burning desire. Throughout this pandemic, I think we can relate that we're just kind of wandering through the wilderness. We're starting our series entitled The Wilderness. In this series, we will follow Moses and the Israelites as God uses Moses to free the Israelites from slavery to the Egyptians. When God rescued the Israelites through Moses, they were rescued out of slavery and into the unknown. God used this unknown, this wilderness experience, to shape the Hebrew people from a rabble of slaves into God's holy people. The good news is that God still uses wilderness experiences today. From a global pandemic to personal issues and everywhere in between, we are all facing the unknown. We're all facing wilderness experiences. So how does God want to use those wilderness experiences to shape us and mold us? As we face the unknown in life, how does God want us to use those experiences to shape us into Christ's hands and feet in this world? We're starting by considering the call of Moses. In this call, Moses moves from going through the everyday grind of life to having a burning desire. So what is it about this call that caused him to have that burning desire? Well, Every fire starts with a spark. 
So what is it that sparked Moses' burning desire? As I mentioned before, when we find Moses in this passage, he's just kind of going through his day-to-day -day routine. He's watching over the flocks of his father-in-law Jethro in Midian. Now, most of us are not shepherds in Midian, but I think we can all relate to going through the daily grind of life. But then something caught his attention. It was a fire, but it wasn't like the fire that burned within him a few chapters earlier. A few chapters earlier, he was still in Egypt and a fire of anger burned within him when he saw a Egyptian slave master abusing a Hebrew slave. The fire consumed him so much that he murdered the Egyptian slave master. I think all of us have had a fire within us that's consumed us. Fires of regret, fires of hate, anger, and rage. But this fire was different. This, this fire burned, but it, it did not consume. God is still in the business of burning bushes today. Perhaps not in the form of shrubberies spontaneously bursting into flame, but burning bushes nonetheless. So what was it that sparked Moses' burning passion? It was the fact that he turned. He turned away from his everyday life and toward God's purposes. What are those people, those events, those issues that God wants to use as sparks in our lives? What are those burning bush moments and opportunities where God wants us to turn away from the familiar and toward his purposes? Burning bushes like when my parents went to a conference for Royal Family Kids Camp. The education director asked them to go, and, and reluctantly they went. They thought, well, maybe someone else will be interested in doing this ministry, and they can bring it to them. Initially, they thought it was just going to be another boring conference, and at first they were right. That was until they turned towards the burning bush that God had for them. When they saw the kids getting off the bus, because part of the training was to observe an actual camp, they saw these kids getting off the bus, and it hit them. These kids have been abused, neglected, and almost forgotten by their parents. Royal Family Kids Camp is specifically for kids in the foster care system. And here they were, getting off the bus, excited, embracing and enjoying life because they were experiencing love. All because people were willing to sacrifice in order to show them the love of Christ. Love that teaches them that you are not garbage. That even though your earthly parents have failed you, you have a Father in heaven that will never leave or forsake you. This was the clearest calling my dad ever had on his life. At one point, I asked him, you know, Dad, why are you doing this? You're, you're over 70 years old. You're already super involved in the church, and you've had three open-heart surgeries. His response to me was, son, God expanded my heart to enable me to do what he's called me to do. I mean, even before the summer before he passed away, he was out there in the heat loving on these kids. One year, his heart got so bad he had to go to the hospital partway through the camp. He went to the hospital, got discharged, rested at home for a day, and then went back to camp just so he could finish the week with the kids. God had placed a BHAG on their hearts, a big, hairy, audacious goal. The BHAG of providing a camp for children who wouldn't otherwise be able to experience the love of God. What are those burning bush moments? What are those things that God wants to use as a spark for us to turn away from normal, everyday life towards his burning passion for our lives. Every fire needs a spark, and, and the spark that caused Moses to go from a normal, boring, everyday life to living out God's passion for him was turning towards that burning bush, and, and God has those burning bushes for us today. But you know, a fire also needs fuel. What is it that fueled Moses' passion? What is it that can fuel our passion? Once Moses turned towards this burning bush, the Lord spoke to Moses. 
The Lord said, Don't go any further. Take off your sandals, for this is holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In order for Moses to have his burning desire fueled, he had to take in the majesty and glory of the God who was calling him. And the same thing happens with us as well. We need to realize that it is the creator and sustainer of the universe who is calling us. A little bit later in their conversation, Moses asks God, what is your name? God, in response, gave the divine name that is so sacred for the Jewish people that they don't even speak it aloud. Therefore, its pronunciation is actually a mystery. Some scholars think it's pronounced Yahweh, others just Yah. It's it's where we get the name Jehovah. It's four letters in Hebrew. It's yod Hey vav Hey, And it essentially means I am because I am. In it, God reveals himself. That, that, that not only does he exist, but he is existence itself. Put differently, everything that is real ultimately finds its reality in relationship to him. For Moses, this taught him that not only is this God more powerful than the gods of Pharaoh, but the unreality of those other gods will dissolve before the great I am. This was a revolutionary concept that serves as a pivot point for this passage, the book of Exodus, the people of Israel, and really the entire world. While today the idea of monotheism would not be considered philosophically or theologically revolutionary, I think if we lived out its implications, it would be. I mean, do we live as if there is only one God who calls us? In a world vying for our loyalties, do we live as if the God who calls us is not just supposed to be our top priority, but the priority that informs the rest of our lives? Second, the greatness of the one calling us should inform the greatness of our calling. When we take in God's glory, majesty, and power, we should receive an equally glorious, majestic, and powerful calling on our lives. For Moses, he was called to free the Israelite people from slavery in Egypt, a big calling from a big God. Sometimes I think we dream too small. For Moses, this calling was so big, it actually intimidated him. If if our calling doesn't intimidate us, perhaps we're dreaming too small. The way our burning desire is fueled is when we take in God's glory, majesty, and power, we will receive an equally glorious, majestic, and powerful calling on our lives. Turning away from the normal human-centered existence toward The God-centered existence of a burning passion is is what sparked Moses' passion. It's what can spark ours as well. Taking in God's glory and majesty fuels this passion, but fires need more than just a spark and fuel. What is it that breathed life into Moses' burning passion? What is the oxygen that enabled him to sustain that calling? As I just mentioned, Moses' call intimidated him, and and, and why wouldn't it? Going up against Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the world. But it also took over 40 years to come to full fruition. The people of Israel, they, they were freed very shortly after this call, but it took them 40 years to get to the promised land. 40 years of wilderness wanderings. And Moses, he didn't even get to enter into the promised land. He only was able to see it. What was it that enabled Moses to overcome the intimidation? And what was it that enabled him to sustain his call? What is the oxygen that enables us to sustain the obedience to our call? After Moses responds with this understandable apprehension at going up against Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the world, what's God's response? What does God give Moses as a comfort? Is it five easy steps to a more confident you? Is it a pill? Is it a power drink? Is it a PR, publicity campaign? No. 
Instead, God says, I will be with you. So what was the oxygen that fueled Moses' burning passion? What is the oxygen that enables us to sustain our obedience to our call? It is trusting in God and trusting in his presence. God was present with Moses as he lived out his call. In the same way, Jesus promises to be with us as we follow him. In John 14, Jesus says to us, I will not leave you as orphans. I will go to the Father and I will send you a comforter. I will send you the spirit of truth. The same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead is, lives within us when we trust him. And that spirit will sustain us in living out the burning passion that God has given us. And, and, and so often we need that. We need that perseverance. We need loads of perseverance. I once read a meme that said 2020 is a unique leap year, that there were 29 days in February, 300 days in March, and in like five years in every month after April. We need the Holy Spirit to breathe life into our burning passion, to sustain us in being loyal to his call in our lives. As we consider this burning passion, I'm going to close with a story that I've adapted from C.S. Lewis. He speaks about Satan meeting with some of his senior demons to figure out what's the best way to tempt humans away from God. And, and one of them said, I know, let's try to convince them that God doesn't exist. And, and Satan shakes his head and says, no, they're, they're made in God's image. Surely very many of them are going to be able to figure out that God exists. Another one said, I got it. Let's convince them that we don't exist, that the devil and the demons don't exist. And again, Satan said, I, I don't think that's going to work. After all, we're the ones tempting them. Certainly the spiritually perceptive ones are going to figure out that we exist. And then the third one gave a suggestion that, that pleased our great enemy. He said, well, why don't we just tell them the truth? Tell them that God loves them, that God wants to plant a burning desire in their lives, and that they should seek after this burning desire with all their heart, with all their strength, with all their mind, and that they should start seeking that burning desire that will fulfill them tomorrow. Satan smiled. He said, go, your plan will work. Brothers and sisters, let's not procrastinate. Let's not wait until tomorrow right here, right now. Let us say to the Lord, here I am. Where do you want to send me? Every fire needs a spark. It needs fuel and it needs oxygen. What are those events? What are those opportunities in life that God wants to use as a spark to have us turn towards him and his purposes for our lives? How can we open our lives to God's glory, his majesty, and his greatness? So God's glory and his greatness can fuel our burning passion. And finally, what is that oxygen that can breathe life into our burning passion, into our calling? How can we surrender and trust God more and more so that the Holy Spirit can breathe life, sustaining the fulfillment of our call as God's kingdom comes to us and it comes through us. Please pray with me. Lord, set our hearts on fire so that we can live out the burning passion that you have for our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.